Thanks for watching CMTV. We know you'll be blessed by this week's message. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Visit cmjacksboro.com for more information about our church and ways you can get involved. Thanks for joining us and welcome home. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And, and we just lift Sadie before you. And Father, I just thank you that she is your vessel this morning. She is your facilitator of your Holy Spirit. And so I thank you that all the studying she's done, all the reading she's done, Father, that you'll bring forth the lucidity of your word, that understanding instantly and directly that each and every person here today will receive this word instantaneously, directly and instantaneously. Father, we just thank you for your peace over now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm, in. I'm so glad that you're here. And... Um... I just also ask the Lord Jesus to stand up here with me because it's his spirit of truth that I want coming through. And that's what we need because that's what sets us free, right? Yes. Well, today's message is casting down the spirit of Jezebel. You know, we've stood here and we have, uh, we took authority over it as a congregation. We decreed the downfall of Jezebel, did we not? Yes. Some of y'all remember that? We addressed it. And heavily last week. How many of you had havoc this week? In your families? How many of you had uh, things that shouldn't have happened? Yes, we have. Yes, we have. <laughs> we had a cow die. In our own personal family, uh, attacks began to happen because that ugly head of Jezebel tried to rise its head. Saying, oh, really? You're really going to get rid of me? You bet we are. Amen. You bet we are. Amen. Okay. Now I'm going to take authority over some things because these things fall under the spirit of Jezebel. See, Jezebel is a principality. So by the authority of the Lord Jesus, I take authority over that spirit of Jezebel, over a mocking spirit that tries to mock us, over witchcraft, which is control and manipulation, over pride, which is the downfall of everything, and over religion. In Jesus' name, you shut up. Amen. The Word of God is going to go forth, and these people will be freed today. Amen? Amen? All right. Now, with that, I'm going to give you some characteristics so you can begin to recognize this spirit. And it operates through people. It operates through governments. But once we recognize it, this is not a word of condemnation. I want you to understand that this is exposing the spirit of Jezebel. So don't blame your husband, don't blame your wife, don't blame your boss. You need to recognize it, who your enemy is. And don't tolerate it. Don't allow it to troll you. You don't have to. So some of the characteristics of Jezebel, um, now it, this is a very intelligent and cunning spirit, and, and you need to know it. And these lower ones follow under it. Father, I just thank you for clarity of the word, for understanding how evil this spirit is. And we have understanding today to always recognize and take authority and not participate in Jesus' name. Okay, this spirit is very seductive. Oh, it makes things look really good that are really evil. It's very tempting and lures you into sin. It's very seductive, and it's so deadly because it knows how to lie and lead you into deception of all kinds. It gets in the way to bring you down so you'll not enter in the promises of God to bring you down of who you are and what you've been created to be. It has squished you down, and it does it through people, and it does it in the atmosphere, and you're not aware of it. Many churches, many marriages, uh, many countries have fallen. Friendships have been destroyed and brought down because of this spirit. It will suck the life out of you and attack you for trying to succeed. It, it, it tries to kill you. If it has access to you and you've given place to it in your life, it can make you sick and will try to kill you. And you need to know this. Did Jezebel not try to kill all the prophets? The prophets of God, did she not? Yes, she did. Yes, she did. And Elijah stood up against this, and Elijah 
killed 500 prophets of Baal. He did this amazing outpouring of God's Spirit in defeating that. But then he ran in fear from Jezebel. She said, I'm going to kill you. And he ran in fear. God's wanted us to stand up. We don't have to run in fear. He's wanting us to stand up. Stand up. So, uh, the seduction spirit, okay, let's talk about this. Uh, sex is a very powerful weapon. Many examples are even just in the scriptures of powerful men, King David himself. I mean, he had a sex problem. He had an affair with um, Solomon's mother. And many, uh, many things fell on that. He had way too many wives, but then it was even worse in Solomon's life. What do you have? 300 wives and 600 concubines or something like that? I think that's a sex problem, don't you? Yeah. Well, this, this kind of seduction uh, has brought down many a kingdom, many, many of God's people. And like Ahab, you know, Jezebel seduced Ahab, and she ruled when he was king. And I, I want you to see this, and I want you to see an, a, also a story of Samson and Delilah. Samson was called as a judge in Israel from, from before he was born, and he had a sex problem. And this Philistine woman, Delilah, oh, let, let, let's, let's think of the story here. I just want you to see ha how seducing this spirit is, because he had supernatural power, he had supernatural strength to go out and, and defeat and, and to rule and judge at that time. Well, Delilah had had a little hold on him. I'm sure she was extra beautiful, but she was very seducing. And, you know, she was very cunning, and she would whine and wear him down. And say, oh, you don't love me. You won't tell me where you get your strength from. And she was just, this is just another ploy, okay? That's manipulation. It's control to try to bring him down. Eventually, she did bring him down. But God had to say at the end. God had to say at the end, and he restored him at the end, and he gave his life for the people and gave his strength back. But you need to see how cunning this is. How cunning. I want you to show these images right here. These next ones says, uh, Babylon is the spirit of Jezebel. And I want you to see that. Babylon the great, enemy of God's people, mother of harlots, gave birth to false religions. And of the abominations of the earth, spiritual fornication. Is the, is the other picture up there too? And on her forehead a name was written, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and of the abominations of the earth. This, you must understand this. This is huge in the spirit realm. Huge. It says she rides and sits on the heads of a seven-headed dragon. That's over nations and stuff like that. You, you need to understand how evil and powerful this spirit is. And I, have, I want you all to be aware of something because you've probably heard it too. I have seen and heard God's people calling America Babylon. They are cursing our country with their mouth. This is God's people. They're wrong. This is a spirit and we need to unite together and bring it down. Amen. We need to speak blessings on this country and not curses. So if you've agreed with that, that needs to be corrected in your thinking. Let's go to Revelation 17, 1 through 5. Then one of the seven angels who had seven bowls came, talked with me and said, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. With whom the kings of the earth committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. He caught him up in the spirit and took him somewhere. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written. There it is. Big, bold in the Word of God. And we're calling it a country. That's a lie from that spirit. Do you see it? Do you see it? Now I'm also going to give you a, an example wide open in our country. And I'm going to use Hillary Clinton as an example. 
See what what feeds Baal is sacrifice. And abortion is sacrificing our children to Baal. And it empowers this spirit. And that's why it must come down. It must come down and abortion must end. Because every aborted child is a blood sacrifice that, that empowers that spirit. And she went so far, so far to say, it's okay if a baby's crowning at the womb to kill it? Really? Right in front of our faces. That spirit, right in front of our faces. Now I want to explain something to you, and it's going to set you free. It will free you. Okay? Because of what I just said, I'm sure some of you have had an abortion or paid for one. You've overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Amen. You have freedom in Christ and you're forgiven. But I'm going to show you something God showed me. What, it, it brought me to tears as I was reading. It talks about the martyrs. Until the number of martyrs has come in and I had a vision... And I saw that part of those martyrs were these aborted babies. <laughs> it broke my heart. But see, God's Word says He knew you before He formed you in your mother's womb. He knew you. You basically volunteered to come here. And I believe what God was showing me, many of those babies volunteered to be a martyr because God's going to flip it on the enemy. He's flipping everything on the enemy. He thought He won. He thought all these aborted babies were going to continue to empower this spirit, but God is flipping it Amen. because he's counting that blood. He's counting it. So if you have a baby up there, you rejoice. Amen. You rejoice. You are forgiven. And they grew up in the most awesome atmosphere ever. Amen? Amen. Amen. You are forgiven and you receive that. You receive it. But see, here's the lie of the spirit of Jezebel. See, because it will come to you and put tremendous guilt on you. And it's had legal access to lie to you in your life because you participated in this at one point in your life. Okay? And so the Spirit lies to you and says, I have access to you. I have control over you. Remember what you did? You caused your baby to pass through the fire. Can you see that? It had a legal right. But the blood of Jesus Christ shuts the mouth of that spirit. Amen. And you need to receive that goodness. You need to receive that grace. You need to receive that freedom. That freedom. And tell it to shut up. Tell it to shut up. No longer will you have power over me. No longer will you lie to me or have access to me. Amen. Is this understandable? Yes. Is it a good word? Yes. yes, it is a good word. So when you combine the power of that spirit and that seduction, and it likes to attach itself to powerful, beautiful, charismatic leaders in the church and in the world. It likes to attach itself. Where's the picture of the kings dancing with her? Look at that. Can you see the spirit and how it's gotten in all the kingdoms of the world? The religious heart hardly has committed for communication with the kings of the earth. Do you know we are called kings and priests unto our God? How infiltrated this is in the body of Christ. Not just worldly kings on, on that scale, but we are kings and priests unto our God. This spirit will attack like a dog, a vicious dog. The Lord gave me a dream, and, he, and, and I was, when I was preparing this, he let me know that what I saw, that was the spirit of Jezebel that lures you into stuff and then attacks like a dog. In this dream, um, what I saw was a man on the side of the road, and he had a puppy. And he was trying to lure people over to help him catch the puppy. Well, all he had to really do was to reach down and pick it up. But when the people would pull over, and step out of the car and bend over to pick up the puppy, this vicious head of a dog went and bit their head off. I saw this thing twice. 
I thought, what the heck was that? And then on the next scene I saw, is I went and got a group of people, and we went after that dog. And we went and found it because we were going to euthanize it. We were going to kill it. That's what the body of Christ is going to do. No mercy. No mercy. It has put no mercy on you. That was the spirit of Jezebel. It attacks like a dog. <gasps> wicked. Wicked. So anything that gets in its way and tries to stop it is going to attack. So don't cooperate with it. Don't cooperate with it. It will steal your inheritance. It will steal your dreams. And, and, the, and I know you've seen this and felt this, this control and manipulation coming out of family and, and loved ones. And you know, if you share your dream with somebody or, you, or a vision of something and they're like, who, you? You? Tell you you're worthless, say you can't have it. Well, one of the big lies in the body of Christ is a message we heard a long time ago. The message was about the need to be great. And it really made you feel bad for having a desire to succeed. God's blessings are to, for us to succeed, to be blessed, to be prosperous. We run after him wholeheartedly and obey him. He wants to bless the socks off of us. He goes so far to say, I will make your name famous. I will make you great. But the enemy of our soul, through this spirit, says, you can't have it. I'm going to get it before you do. And if I have to kill to get it, I will. Kill your hopes. Kill your dreams. Kill your aspirations. Kill your self-worth. Just like what Jezebel did when Ahab wanted the garden of that man right outside the palace. She had him murdered. Many of our inheritance have been stolen, but God's going to bring it back. It's happened in your heritage, and he's going to give it to you. Thank you, Lord, Amen. for restitution. Restitution, payback. Payback. So that's that mocking spirit as well, trying to mock you for trying to succeed, trying to better yourself in life. That is a mocking spirit. Recognize it. Cunning and prideful. This is why the Spirit will try to fill a person up with much pride as they can. So that these people would be totally incapable of admitting that they could even have this kind of Spirit in them. This is how they will be deceived and uh, how well the Spirit has played and manipulated them during these people's entire life. It has been on the inside of them. It is passed down from generation to generation, but it is a Spirit that's been over our country and over this world. But once we begin to recognize and exposure happens, we can start overcoming these things and, and refuse to allow ourselves to let it come through us or not tolerate it in love with a family member. Okay? This is helping. Helping you recognize some things. Let's go to Proverbs 16, 18 through 19. Now let's talk about the pride. See, because pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. proud being prideful is our enemy. It's our enemy. It causes strife in relationships. It is, a, it is your downfall and my downfall if we do not deal with pride. We must become of a humble spirit to become like Christ. We must become that way. So if you are heavily under the influence of this spirit of Jezebel, you will recognize it in others very quickly, but deny its hold on you. So we need to look inward, not outward. I told you before I started, do, do not blame your loved ones. Do not, do not put blame. You can recognize it, but you've got to look inward. Okay, where have I participated in control and manipulation? Where have I participated in squishing somebody's dreams? Where have I participated in this stuff? Okay? Forgive. Forgive yourself. Forgive those and pray. And pray. I'm just going to throw out some more characteristics to help you recognize. Help you recognize. 
Refusing to admit guilt or wrong. Do you have trouble admitting you're, you're guilty or that you were wrong? Do you, do you have to prove that you're right? Very seldom will uh, someone heavily under this influence apologize. I'm too prideful. But if they can get you to apologize, that empowers them. I'm right, see? Takes credit for everything or has a false humility. Uses people to accomplish its agenda. It lets others do the dirty work. And gets another person's emotions stirred up. And then lets that person go into a rage. While Jezebel sits back looking innocent saying, Who me? What did I do? This behavior makes it difficult for even the most ardent truth seekers to pin one down. See, I told you it's clever. Withholds information, you only get parts of information. Only enough for me to lead you along. Set a trap for you. Jezebel is threatened by the prophet. Was she not threatened by Elijah? Tried to kill him? Jezebel hates the prophetic word. Is afraid that you're going to be, she's going to be exposed. Of course she's going to be exposed by the prophetic. That's what's going to bring her down. Volunteers for anything so he can get close to leadership. And those who have um, control. Lies. A person with Jezebel spirit would lie even when, they, even when they don't have to. No one can lie better than a Jezebel spirit. He can make you believe whatever he wants you to believe and does it through manipulation. Witchcraft. The fact that Jezebel can look you in the eye and lie just shows how strong and adamant this rebellious spirit is in them. It's got to control them. Ignores and attacks. Attacks. This is another manipulation tactic to ignore you till you finally give in to what they want. Or attacks. Goes on the attack. Your character, who you are. <laughs> Anything to wear you down one way or the other. Never gives credit or shows gratitude. Somehow they're going to flip it around to where everything looks at them. Somehow. Criticizes everyone. Their character finds something wrong with everybody. And infilters this to cause division everywhere. Everywhere. One up and ship. This person with a Jezebel spirit will always upstage another person. Jezebel feels threatened by anyone who dares to steal the limelight or anyone who, has a, who is a threat to their power of control. If you're with a, such a person and, and tell of your accomplishments or victory, you can be assured he will quickly tell of something he's done much better. Spiritualizes everything. Doesn't that just get up your nerves? Shut up already. I mean, really. It's a spirit of religion, spiritualizing everything, which tries to put guilt and condemnation on you. See, once again, look at me. I'm holier than thou. Is insubordinate. A Jezebel never takes the side of an employer or a person of authority. Of course not. They're rebellion of all authority. Unless it is a temporary action to make himself look good, he often will take the credit for someone else's idea. His main desire is for power and control. They're pushy and domineering. A person with Jezebel's spirit pressure you to do things, seemingly ripping from you your right to choose. Who has not felt that? Have you been guilty? We have to recognize this stuff in ourselves. We have to recognize what it is so we don't tolerate it. Uses the element of surprise. That came out of nowhere, didn't it? That came out of nowhere. Main thrust is for control, always. So seeds of discord. Oh, yeah. That's why churches fall apart. Seeds of discord. That's why it's very important, very important to hang on to unity in the body. Hang on. Don't listen to someone spewing crap out their mouth about leadership or about others. Pray. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Stop their mouths. Stop their mouth. 
Jezebel spirit commands attention. It is vengeful. Very vengeful. This is vicious. Vengeful. Attempts to make you look like you're the Jezebel. F- flips everything on you. You try to talk to them and they flip it around right at you. It's you, not me. Insinuates their disapproval. You've seen the look. There's no reason not to be, disappro- to be disapproving. Anything that's going to knock you down, your character holds you down. That's a fear tactic. You're recognizing this stuff, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, they know it all. Jezebel knows it all. It's very ambitious, <laughs> but their ambition is wicked. It's independent. No one has input in Jezebel's life. None. Of course, it is religious. We talked about that. Very religious. You know, over the whole world, religion's under, false religion is under the spirit. Oh, it hides very well. We all want to believe that the person with that spirit is delivered. The person may seem normal for a period, exhibiting none of the char- uh, characteristic traits. Then suddenly, without warning, a situation will arise. Once again, with that spirit taking control and wrecking havoc on lives. Hopefully true repentance will come and they'll get set free. Now it's very difficult when you're living with people like this. It's hard. But you've got to pray for them. Father, set them free. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. It's kind of like that day I told Eugene. I don't know what that is that jumped on you, but that's not very becoming of a son of God. Well, we've got to look at ourselves and say, okay, God, what's jumping on me that's not very becoming of me because I'm your daughter. I'm your son. I need to recognize. I need to get this thing out. I need to kick it out. Okay, so we have a strategy. I told you this was called, we're going to bring her down. We're going to bring the spirit down. First of all, you've got to humble yourself. Humble yourself. Recognize it, and we have to repent. We have to repent. Don't get isolated. Here's one thing that the Spirit wants you to do is get isolated. See, God's Word says confess your faults one to another. Pray for another that you may be healed. Oh, but it's going to keep hiding. We talked about it hides. Oh, heck no. I'm not going to, I'm not going to expose myself. No, because you might get free. See the lie? See the lie the Spirit says to you? Don't get isolated from other believers. You need each other. We are strength in numbers. One can send a thousand a flight. Ten can send ten thousand a flight. Well, what about every one of us in this room got in agreement and we have a whole host of thousands upon thousands of angels here to fight with us? Amen. That's huge. Do the math. Just do the math. Fasting. Fasting. You know, Jesus said his disciples were having trouble casting the Spirit out one time. And they were like, why, why can't we get this out? Of course, he rebuked them for their unbelief. But then he said, however, some of these things only come out with prayer and fasting. There is a place for fasting. And I would suggest each of you set some time aside and maybe pray about fasting if you really want to get free. Really want to get free. So don't, don't, don't isolate yourself. Humble yourself and ask for help. Ask for help. And you know what? I think leaders have the hardest time of humbling themselves more than anyone else to ask for help. Because this lie that they have to know all the answers, that they're going to be exposed. We must humble ourselves. We are all in this together. All in this together. If you tolerate this spirit because of the fear a man has a grip on you, because it might embarrass you, it's all because of pride, period. I told you pride ruins everything. Everything. Satan, Satan was thrown out of hell, I mean out of heaven into, down to this earth because of pride. And so if this spirit can get us into pride and keep us hiding, let it go. Let it go, ask for help. Yeah, Proverbs 18, 1 and 2. I'm going to read it to you. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. 
A fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. I already read the next scripture, that why, why fast. I already read that. Now let's go to Proverbs 16, 18 and 19. Oh, I already did that. I'm sorry. We just did that. Let's go to Revelation 17, 1 through 5. And then we'll show a picture again. Revelations 17, 1 through 5. Oh my gosh, I already did this. I put it in here twice. Show the picture again of uh, Jezebel dancing with the kings. I want this in your mind again. Now Proverbs 18, 1 through 3. I didn't realize I reverb it. Maybe God wants us to hear this again. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire and rages against all wise judgment. A fool has no delight in understanding. God is giving us understanding today, but in expressing his own heart. So apparently the Holy Spirit wanted you to hear that twice. Amen. Matthew 17, 19. This is a, then the disciples came to Jesus privately and asked. See, here we go. We're going to go to the fasting again. He want, I think you need to fast. I don't think it's any mistake I wrote these scriptures down twice. They couldn't cast it out. Let's read it. Keep going. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. For assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say that this mountain move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Hallelujah. Now let's go to Revelations 5, 8 through 10. Now when he had taken the scroll, this is an angel, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. You are a king and you are a priest. Show the angel with the scroll. There's a picture of an angel with a scroll. Okay. Well, there's a, it's a cool picture because it's coming out of heaven with this scroll representing this. And I have this right here because, see, you are a king and priest unto your God. You know the story of uh, Moses when he went before Pharaoh, him and Aaron, and he had the rod? Remember that? Yeah. And he throws it down and it becomes a serpent. Well, then the magicians did the th same thing and they threw theirs down. And the rod of Aaron and Moses ate up the, they're snakes, and then they picked it back up. You know what that represents? Taking power. Taking power out of the enemy. Now I'm going to show you where he gave us that power. But before we do that, I want you to see this image. Show this image in 2 Kings 9.33. I'll read the scripture of them throwing Jezebel down. Right there. Then he said, throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood spattered on the wall and on the horses and the image. And they trampled on her underfoot. This was prophesied that this was going to happen. We need to throw her down. Amen. We need to throw her down, and we've got to take power. But God's given us that power. And um, in the 40 days of Shofar that I wrote, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read a few scriptures to you. Isaiah 61 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And in 1 Peter 2 it reads, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people that has become God's property, so that you would proclaim the manifestation of divine power. That was in my New Man Bible translated from the Hebrew. It in of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
And in Luke 10 it says, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I wanted you to see you have power and what this, this rod of iron is. And in Psalms 2 it says, You shall break them with the rod of iron, you and me. This is talking about you and I with this rod. Taking power from the enemy, you shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. And in Revelations 2, 26 and 7 it says, And he who overcomes, we're overcomers, we're called to be overcomers, and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron, and they shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessel, as I have also received from my Father. And in Revelations 12, 5, this is part of the Revelations 12 sign. See, our Lord already came. Our Lord already came. There's a phenomenon that God's about right now. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God in his throne. We're taking power. We're supposed to take power. We're not wimps. We're the sons and daughters and kings and priests unto our God and we've got to understand how powerful we are. So we need to take it as an act of faith. As an act of faith. Hold your hand out as if you're holding a scepter out. Hold it out in faith. Down with Jezebel. Down with Jezebel. Because when a king would point his scepter down, it meant death. That's how, why Esther was risking her life when she went before the king. Because if he had done that instead of this, she'd have been dead. She'd have been dead. I want to talk about this right here. You got a fight on your hands, people. You're in it whether you want to be or not. You got to fight, and we got to fight together. Let's go to Nehemiah 4 14 through 15. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren. Fight for your families. Fight for your children. Fight for your nation, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, all of us to our work. Get in the fight. You're in it whether you want to be or not. Would you rather be victorious and powerful and us unite together? I would. Amen. Oh, you have something to add? The scripture this lady used here in, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 26 and 27 about the rod of iron, that he'll rule with a rod of iron. If you read and begin in verse 18, that's when he's speaking to the church of Thyatira. He says, I have this one thing against you. You allow this woman Jezebel to teach and have authority. Okay, and, and I've been mentioning to you the last two weeks that a, the that a Jezebel spirit is not a woman. Okay, a Jezebel spirit does not just inhabit a woman. A Jezebel spirit is an unclean spirit. If you go back to the beginning when Sadie started with, with Elijah, the prophet of God, and he came against the 700 prophets of Baal and cast them down, defeated them, and then the woman Jezebel, King Ahab's wife, she said, I'm going to kill you. And, and you know the story. Elijah ran and hid. Okay, then you fast forward all the way to the New Testament. John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness. And if you remember, Jesus himself said, this is Elijah who has come. Okay, and John the Baptist come even dressing like, like Elijah. And, and as he came, and he was preaching, and he was prophesying what God's word says. If you remember, King Herod, who was the king at that time, he had a wife named Herodias. And Herodias hated John the Baptist. And if you remember in the story that, that King Herod was having a big party, and Herodias told her daughter to go and dance before the king. And Satan talked about how he uses sexuality, how he uses uh, manipulation, how he uses seductive uh, uh, means. And Herodias' daughter danced before King Herod. And King Herod was so moved by it, so excited by it, that he said, I'll give you anything up to, the, uh, to half the kingdom. And if you remember, her mother said, bring me John the Baptist's head. 
So see, Jezebel came against Elijah in the Old Testament. Jezebel came against John the Baptist in the New Testament. It is a spirit, as Satan is shown, the spirit of Babylon, that is over the nation. It is over churches to try to control and manipulate what God is doing. When the Holy Spirit begins to move, then this unclean spirit is going to try to move, to control, to manipulate, to intimidate. It happens in, in family lives. And I have to confess, 30 years ago, whenever I began to hear about this, this was what was destroying my life. It was what was controlling my life. King Ahab was the king, but his wife Jezebel usurped his authority. How did she usurp his authority? Because he came in having a pity party, and his countenance was down. How many of you wives, husbands, come in having pity parties, and you try to take care of them? You try to, to comfort them and build them up? Well, it can come in that simply. How many of you women come in with having a pity party and all of a sudden your husbands jump up and, and all of a sudden they're going to take control? How many of you children come home and say something to dad and dad jumps up and he runs to the school fixing to, to beat everybody up there up? That is a form of the Jezebel spirit being at work. I know all of these things. I, I have experienced all of these things. And it's something that we have to continue to have a heart check about. Are you allowing those high places in your life that you refuse to cast down? The thing in this scripture that God is going to rule with, that he says he's going to rule with that rod of iron. Before it, he says, I have this one thing against you. You are allowing this spirit to rule in the church of the living God. As Sadie's already addressed, it's a religious spirit. It deals with a spirit of fear, a spirit of divination, the witchcraft, the control, the manipulation, a spirit of haughtiness. All of these things are in, involved. So we can cast out a spirit of fear. We can cast out a spirit of haughtiness. We can cast out a spirit of jealousy. We can cast out all of these spirits. But unless we deal with the principality, which is a spirit of Jezebel, which Sadie has acknowledged is a spirit of, the, of Babylon, it's something that you have to recognize in your life and you have to be willing to deal with. First, you have to recognize it. The second thing you've got to do is you've got to be willing to repent of it. How many of you are willing to repent? How many of you are willing to recognize first? How many of you can recognize that you have some issues in your life of control, of manipulation, of intimidation? How many of you deal with this pride? How many of you continue to deal with fear? Anybody? Okay, then stand with me, and we're going to pray the prayer to renounce this, to throw her down. The kings of Israel did not, they did not tear down the high places. This is a high place that we are going to tear down. We're not going to continue to allow it in our midst. This is something that must be ag aggressively addressed. It is not something you can passively say, Oh, well, in time it'll come. No. God says, submit to him. He said, tear him down. He said, throw her down. Throw her down. And that's what Sadie's message is about today. Father, we confess that we have allowed a spirit of Jezebel in our midst. We recognize that spirit. We renounce that spirit. We refuse to allow the Spirit to function in our lives. We cast you down now by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth is against you. By the Spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit of God, cleanse me now from top to bottom. Create in me a clean heart, as David said. Holy Spirit, you come. Lord Jesus, you come. And you rebuke this spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks again for watching CMTV. We hope you enjoyed this week's message. If you would like to give a love offering or partner with us financially, visit cmjacksboro.com slash give. Thanks again for watching and welcome home.